I want you to think about how much money do you spend on your farm each year on fertilizer? Now my next question is, are all those dollars being spent appropriately? Do you really know, are you spending exactly the right dollars on every individual acre on the farm? Well look, you're never gonna know this unless you do a good job of soil testing. So that's what we wanna talk about today. How should you do this? Where should you do this? And how often should you soil sample? Let's start from this beginning, Brian. What if you've never soil sampled before? What I would say is you're gonna need to grid soil sample that ground, probably on a two and a half acre grid, maybe a five acre grid at the biggest, just to get an idea of what you're starting with. If you say, well, I've got some samples where uh, my fertilizer dealer pulled one sample per field, I would throw them in the garbage. You really have no idea. Did they pick the best area of the field, the worst area of the field? Did they find an average area of the field? It's tough to know. Now in terms of setting up zones, if you said, well, I don't know if I want a grid sample, maybe I could zone sample, you could certainly do it based on topography or off your yield data, or you could work with a company like Farmer's Edge, look at satellite data over multiple years, and overlay that with your yield data. I think that would be the best way to start if you're gonna do a zone type sampling program. But if you've never done anything, I'd strongly recommend grids. In terms of soil sampling yourself, there are really only a few keys that I would tell you. First of all, get an app like the Ag PhD Soils app and go right to the grid point or zone point. When you drive your vehicle there, just step out and we want to sample quickly. I want you sampling 500 to 1,000 acres in a day. Well, you can't do that if you're wandering around aimlessly or anything else. You have to have a plan. So you go to that point, you drive to that point with your pickup or your four-wheeler, get out and pull two cores on each side of the vehicle dump those all in the sample bag, the lab mixes the sample anymore, you don't have to do that, and then send that sample in. So it's real quick, but I want eight cores for each spot. The other couple things I would tell you is make sure you're going to the same depth every time, whatever depth you pick. Maybe you're doing zero to 12 inch, maybe you're doing zero to six inch, whatever it is, just make sure you have a mark on your probe, you're always going to the same depth, and keep that probe straight up and down every single time. It's really that simple for how you pull soil samples. When you get those samples in, now you've got to do a little evaluation there and try to figure that out, but if you use the Ag PhD Soils app, you can get Midwest Labs recommendations, you can get our recommendations, and certainly you you can ask us more questions too on the Ag PhD radio show. Every day we answer live phone calls. We do take a lot of soil test questions. So we'd love to see your soil tests if you have questions about what do I do with this ground now that I've got a complete soil analysis. Now let's say that you've been pulling samples for a while. The question is how often should you be pulling soil samples out in a field? If you've got a field where everything is pretty even out in the field and you've been monitoring it for a long time, hey, you can probably get away with pulling samples every few years. Maybe it's every third year or every fourth year, something like that even. If you've got big changes that are going on in the field though, and we certainly have that in some of our ground, we're pulling samples every single year. Now, if you're one of the highest yielding producers in the country and you say, I'm going for 400 bushel corn, I'm going for 500 bushel corn, well, chances are you're pulling them once a year or maybe even once during the growing season as well as in between crops. So there, there's different levels of intensiveness there. Uh, I would say for most farmers, they're looking at every third or fourth year. Regardless of where you have your soil tested, the big thing that we would tell you here is we want to see a complete analysis. You need to see a complete analysis. So what is a complete analysis? Well, here are some of the things we're looking for. The first thing we always talk about on a soil test is soil pH. Every crop has kind of its ideal range. Well, the ideal soil pH range for corn, soybeans, and wheat is about 6.3 to 6.8. So that's the first thing that we wanna look at on the soil test. If our pH is way out of whack, let's say it's eight, or let's say it's five, okay, we're giving up a lot of yield in corn, soybeans, and wheat. So the first money spent should be on adjusting that pH. We wanna get that pH down into that right range. Next, we're gonna take a look at how heavy is our soil? What's our cation exchange capacity? How much organic matter do we have? And then we're gonna continue on and talk about base saturation. When we look at that base saturation test, we're looking at a balance of certain nutrients out in the soil. The big ones I'm looking at here first are calcium and magnesium. We wanna have a certain ratio between calcium and magnesium in our soil. If we've got more calcium, we generally have more pore space in our soil. If we have more magnesium, that adds a stickiness to our soil to hold a little more water and, and to tighten up that soil. So we don't want it too tight, but then again, we don't want it too loose either. That's one of the things that base saturation will help you with. 
After that, we also want to make sure that we're looking at these secondary nutrients like sulfur, for example. Darren already mentioned calcium and magnesium. But then finally, the micronutrients. you got to have a complete test to get the right answers and make the right decisions on your farm in terms of fertility. I guess one last thing I'll throw out. A lot of people ask us about soil health tests. Look, I can tell you if your soil is healthy or not just by looking at a regular soil test. Now, for certain programs, you may have to pull a soil health test. But again, if you just go through all the things we talk about on a regular soil test and have complete data there, you're going to know if your soil is healthy or not. So on your farm, if you're asking yourself right now, ah, I don't know if it's super important for me to get great soil tests out there. Let me tell you, it is. Start with one field. If you don't have good soil test data from your farm, just pick one field. Look at it this year on a two and a half acre grid and see what's going on in that field. Once you understand how much variability there is out there and what you can change and how you can spend those fertilizer dollars a little differently to make more money on your farm, you'll see soil testing is really important. Last question, should I soil sample in the fall or spring? Sample as soon as you possibly can. I like it in the fall, then I have more time to analyze what I need to do prior to my next crop. Well, one thing you'll definitely have to do in your next crop is control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? <laughs>